Hello, and welcome to Clamp, the Creating, Living, and Making podcast. I'm your host, Morley Kurt, and joining me this week is Grant Alexander. Hello. Adam Mackey. Hello. And for the second week in a row, we have a special guest. This week, the one and only Jimmy DeResta. Hello. I was wondering, was I on last week? I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey guys. Yes, That's last fun. week, uh, it's kind of funny. Grant and I were talking about um, Grant's clamp mendation of the week was Good Clean Fun by Nick Offerman. And I was saying that's actually how I discovered Jimmy was through his little illustration of you in your basement of the book. Yeah, yeah, like, that's oh. right. That's funny. Yeah, which is it sounds so like crazy, like looking back. Um, but yeah, thanks for. Did you guys back. know yesterday was Nick's fiftieth birthday? No, I didn't know that. Yeah, June twenty sixth. No. Happy birthday, Nick! That's actually the date of my bar mitzvah. About a. Uh, Nine 20, years ago, 19, <laughs> or ten 19, years ago now. June 26, 1970 is, is Nick's birthday. Hmm. Nice. Oh, well, that. So yeah, have, happy birthday, Nick. I'm sure you're listening. Thanks. Yes. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs> He's right here. You see that door? He's on the other side of that door. Right there. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Maybe at the end of the podcast, you can let him out and he can say a couple <laughs> words. So uh, what have, what's been in your guys' clamps this week? Uh, why don't we start with Jimmy since he's our guest? I've been making, I don't know if you happen to get a chance to see my vlog recently. I put a vlog up and I'm making these bullet bourbon displays. They're like half of a, half of a teardrop trailer that would kind of hang off off of a wall and we made a facade wall. So it's like a flat, it's like a, it's like a, a theater flat and then sticking out of the theater flat is half of this teardrop trailer. So I just, uh, I made the prototype, which you might've seen on my socials. And we just, I literally just laid the wheels next to it and never attached the wheels to it. And so anytime I've ever shown it, it's been just sitting on boxes with the wheels just leaning against it. And so tonight on the prototype, which was the first one I completed, I finally attached the wheels because they're all done except for the fact that I just never attached the wheels to the finished one. So I did that just about, about 45 minutes ago and you can still see them all dusty from laying on the floor of my shop underneath the thing with them under a car. So I did that, and uh, yesterday and this afternoon I finished my leather bag video, which is going to be up tomorrow. Did a leather bag video, which will be on my channel, and the voiceover version will be on the the Weaver Leather channel. So that's that's what I've been working on. And I just just minutes ago before we started, I finished the edit. Sweet, cool. I was, um I saw your the teardrop trailers on your social, and I didn't realize that it was half a trailer until yeah. you talked about it or making it, and then I was like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's but, a display. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Are those going to be going down the highway, like um, on the back of a truck? Or are they going to be like loaded on a trailer? No, no, they will. Well, they'll be in store. They're going to be in uh, here in uh, America. Some, oh, I think they're all going to go into Kentucky. There's a few stores that are kind of like I keep saying, like the Home Depot of liquor stores. So this right. of space, <laughs> New Hampshire. I keep, they're, per, they're permanent installs. They're not. Yeah, the they'll they'll be up for a few months. I keep asking these guys. I keep saying. Now, you're sure they can get something that's seven feet by seven feet through the door? You're sure of that? <laughs> I said, well, I guess these, if it's the Walmart of liquor stores, they, you would think they'd have I hope so, because these do not come apart. I know I'm going to get – I asked everybody. I was like, these will not fit through a 36-inch door. These will not fit through a 40-inch door. These have to fit through an opening that a car will fit through. Now, is that the case? And everyone's like, uh, yeah, they get pallets all the time. Like, that's the question. The question is, <laughs> oh, will no. these get inside the store? And I guarantee, I've, I've warned everybody from the beginning, I'm going to update everybody on social media because I guarantee you there's going to be one store where they're like, hey, um, if we have to take it apart and get it through a window, like how, how will we do that? <laughs> you think they'll just end up doing it in like the parking lot or something? You have to get a saw out. I mean, they're literally all screwed and glued and nailed together. There's no way they come apart without... Having to cut them in half. Dang. Yeah, we'll I guess all you can really do is warn them and then, yeah. What about you, Grant? What's uh, what's in your clamps this week? Well, it's been a hot week this week. Uh, it was like insanely hot and I was trying to do some resawing on my bandsaw and the motor overheated. Oh, uh, Yeah, it's a 1946 Delta, so it's probably seen its day. <laughs> But, is it a uh, Daytona motor or is it a Delta motor, Daytona motor? Uh, I think it's a Daytona. It just yeah. The next day it worked again. It was just like the thermal couple. Oh, yeah. 
yeah, whatever. It's say, just you've like got the king of bandsaws here, so if you need <laughs> advice, <laughs> yeah. Well, he's the reason I went and got a vintage Delta because I yeah. watched your bandsaw tips, and it said, "Well, this is what you need is a vintage Delta." So I just <laughs> went out and got one, and it's they're, be- they're the best, yeah. and they, they have the best adjustments still. Like you know, you think the saws would get better adjustments from you know what had happened in the seventies, sixties, fifties, and forties. They still have the best thumb adjustments. Yeah. It's the only thing I wish it had is this one has the dual it doesn't have the hinge. Uh oh yeah, yeah. So you gotta pull yeah. the door completely off, yeah. Exactly. That's just the really annoying part. I I wish I had thought that through. Because the of dual all, ones of all I own, I own like six of them. I only I only own one <laughs> I only own one with the hinges. Oh wow. You know, as far as that particular model goes. That's from the nineties. <laughs> So that's uh, that was my fun of cutting my day short. Uh, I was working on uh, giant poster holders. And uh, the other thing has just been continuing to plan for my backcountry camping trip. And I thought maybe I'd shave with my new razor. I Ooh. saw the poster over your shoulder just a second ago. So thank yeah. you very much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I got Is the- it sharp? I've been getting a couple of complaints. Not a lot. I mean, we made thousands of those things, and I only have a handful of complaints where people say it's not sharp enough to cut hair. Oh, it, which... it shaves. I tested on my arm. It shaved my arm. No problem. Oh, good. Okay. So that, that must be than, an anomaly. Yeah. The sharper than I can make my own tools. So. Oh, that's good. That's good. That's good. <laughs> and your, your next video is going to be you shaving your face with it, right? Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, cool. Yeah. Thank you so much. And it, so you're heading out next week or? Uh, for the, the, for the, week, the week after. It'll all be gotcha. going. It's nice, yeah. We 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 got our camping trip all scheduled for next week. It's nice. I feel I'm starting to feel a little cooped up in the city. Where are you going? Um, actually, I think we just switched. We're going to Algonquin now. Nice. Algon Gone Quinn. <laughs> yeah, cool. uh, we were gonna go kind of more your neck of the woods, front neck area, but um, yeah, we can get canoes in Algonquin apparently, which is very nice. Yeah, that's nice. Oh. What about you, Adam? What have you been up to? <laughs> I was laughing at Molly's uh, Australian impression again. That was totally unconscious. I wasn't even trying to be Australian. <laughs> I've actually had a pretty busy week. I built um, an activity gym for my baby. I am in the means of making a um, working with metal for like the first time. Well, sort of, but actually trying to make something out of metal. So I'm making a um, branding iron of my logo. Oh, sick. Those are fun. Um, yeah. Well, see, I'm, I've got a piece of steel and going to do the whole thing with a rotary tool, so that's going to be fun. Oh, good. <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't have a welder or anything. Just wear, um, wear eye protection. <laughs> yeah. And All you got to do is carve away everything that's not the logo. It's really, really simple. Just think well, of it like that, is, and that's it. Oh, I don't have a sticker on me. My logo is pretty straightforward. It's just two M's, so it's oh, there you uh, go. even easier. Um. What else? It was something else. I'm starting. I'm trying a new video style this week, um, and Grant wanted me to bring something back, which I did, which is the one-hour builds. Nice. So yeah, those were the best. I've got, I've got to make a new intro for that because now I've changed my name and I've only got the old intro. Um, yeah. The yeah, the only like video else, but I don't remember. The only video of mine that Jimmy's watched is a one-hour build. <laughs> which one was it? <laughs> it was a mallet video. And you, uh, you yeah, commented, yours was a mallet. yeah, you commented to, uh, to make sure you <laughs> use your, cover on your table saw. Yeah. Your saw guide, your, your guide on your, your cover on your, uh, table saw from nine, oh, yeah. nine finger Jim, Jimmy. Yeah. Listen to me. I cut <laughs> myself every two weeks. <laughs> listen to me. Yeah. That's gross. We don't need to see that. <laughs> <laughs> it's filling back in. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I had a pretty big week this week as well. My, um, 3d printer finally came in. It was, I got a Prusa, which, so it came all the way from the Czech Republic and with coronavirus, it took like, it was on back order for like six weeks, but then when it shipped, it came super fast. So my whole day Tuesday was just building that. It was like 13 hours straight of just putting it together and it does there's no chunks. It's just wires, electronics, motors, and and screw yeah, I watched the video this morning. That looks yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> I I was nervous turning it on, um, yeah. but it worked. It it works really nice. I got it all calibrated. I spent like I kind of stayed up till eleven just getting it. Like I was like making sure that like 
every electronic component worked. And then the next day I really got it all tuned nice, adjust the belt tensions and everything. Um, it's all plug and play, right? Like you don't have to solder or anything or anything. Yeah. It's there's the only tools you really need are like Allen keys and a screwdriver. And, and then it's like, there's like little janky tricks and things like pulling a, pulling a nut through a 3d printed part. Uh, and I, I did use some clamps actually, because you have to push, um, like steel rods into a 3d printed extrusion. So you kind of had to, it's, I guess technically you could do it with your arms, but I, I didn't want to snap anything. Yeah. We wouldn't be yeah, clamp fast if we didn't mention clamps at least once. Yeah, although we've been slacking recently. There's, there's the clamp mention. Um, Do you guys manufacture clamps? You should now. Oh, my God. It's a great idea. One day. private label what? clamps going. The clamp yeah. clamp. Yeah. yeah. And, should uh, do that when we, we, get, we get as big as you, Jimmy. <laughs> hey, I, you I just, know, when it comes to products, anybody can develop products. You know, it doesn't mean – you know, you could you could – develop anything that, that that's what you know we could talk about this more when we dig in but uh you know the the one thing i love about this community is that it's really a level playing field you know the only yeah. thing i have is just a little bit more time than a lot of people but that's that's, that's it mm-hmm. here's one that, you know what needs um a clamp adjustment is like squeeze clamps i feel like oh, all nice. the throats are the same the same depth a squeeze clamp with a really deep throat I think squeeze clamps should be all thrown in the garbage. <laughs> I agree. Every squeeze clamp, like when I go to someone's shop and I'm like, can you hand me a clamp? And they're like, oh, they give me an Irwin clamp. I'm like, take this. You definitely can look it in the garbage can and don't forget to take it out. Uh, Maybe we should change uh, an, to an F style for this podcast. The logo. Yeah. <laughs> oh, is the logo a squeeze clamp? I, I, think it's an Irwin. I think it's an Irwin tracing. <laughs> oh, I hate those clamps. I hate them. <laughs> Because uh, all that, all the, the common shape. The only thing they're good for is like holding cardboard in place. Yeah. <laughs> to be fair, that's like mostly what I use them for. I'm not like because you can't up any tabletops. You know, you need like four of them to hold a piece of plywood in place to like run a saw through it. Yeah. That's yeah. You need like eight of them to like hold something. He- and like, and you pull the release and it just shuts all the way. And then you got to like hold the release and shove it against your waist. <laughs> they, I can't stand those things. And then. Like what you need is that last, every clamp needs that last little, and you yes. can't get it out of that. Oh, yeah. They, they have very have like, each squeeze is a big movement and there's no fine adjustment. Yeah. Yeah. I use them for like, to hold things together while I screw it. I wouldn't use them to actually hold it together to dry. Yeah. I, I only like them for their like quick. That's it. If I'm doing something that really needs pressure, then I use the F, but I, I hate when I'm like screwing for like 15 minutes to try it. And it's like, and I could have just like done three squeezes. 15 minutes, really? 15 minutes. <laughs> you, no, you need, no, so you need you just to be voice for that. Come on. But with like a quick release to yeah. release the actual screw. <laughs> like a screw, <laughs> screw voice. <laughs> One squeeze clamps. <laughs> and I got one of my, uh, my first prints done. Jimmy, you might appreciate this little guy. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's great. It's like a little flywheel. That's cool. Yeah. Um, Did you put a magnet in it? Yeah. So it's. I mean, it's it's actually the extrusion indicator because as the extrusion motor turns, there's no way of seeing if it's actually moving because the. Oh yeah, is, like, yeah, yeah. That's great. So it's, it's it's just like a quick twenty minute print. I was doing a bunch. So it's of like, it's like, like putting oh, a fan on a shaft. It's, it's like putting a piece of tape on the shaft so you see it move. Yeah. Exactly. That's great. Yeah. So very pretty excited about all the possibilities this is opening up and like working out of my apartment i feel like i actually have something an apartment tool that makes sense it's not all power tools now now we have a quieter tool <laughs> yeah. uh yeah and i finally yeah. remembered what my other thing was i was i started on the um my build for the enlight enlighten us challenge Ooh. oh yes build all the material for that so yes bought all the so material for that jimmy's given the 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 what is that i it's uh the <laughs> the uh vincent ferrari and uh his podcast he did it he's doing like a challenge that's kind of like the rockler bent wood challenge or the rockler plywood challenge oh, yeah. and he's calling yeah. it the uh enlighten us challenge and you basically have to build a a lamp or a light fixture oh very cool that's cool yeah, yeah build a light fixture not add lights to they're very adamant about you can't just add LEDs to a cutting board and call it a light fixture. Yeah. <laughs> if, I, if I can give you any advice, don't show any of the electrical being connected. Just show it turn on. 
Yeah, no, it's like, you shouldn't do. have turned the screw. You turned the screw too tight. Oh, you didn't strip it well enough. You should have soldered it. You shouldn't have soldered it. You should have added it there. You shouldn't have added it there. You should have three prongs. You should have two prongs. You should have one prong. You should have four prongs. So the comments here. If I can have that Christian, many comments, have if I can have that many comments on my video, I would be happy. <laughs> it's funny. I, I always notice when I kind of notice that, uh, like for example, like Mike and his bus build, Mike Montgomery, he he's very careful about like not showing the inside electronics. And I was thinking, I was like, do people really? attack him that much for electronics and i guess they do yeah they do anytime i've made a lamp and i i could buy a kit from home depot here in the united states and the lamp kit has a, a plug that has two prongs sticking out of it and there's no earth as everybody outside the united states would know it as there's no ground it's not on there because in america ground and i think it's called the uh, uh, the neutral bar sh- the neutral bar shares a, a ground or an earth. I don't know exactly what that means, but that's what Patrick told me. And so the plug has two prongs. And then everybody, I can't believe you didn't put an earth on there. You didn't put the ground. You're going to die. The client's going to die a horrible death. They're going to die in their sleep because I've made a couple of lamps that I posted for clients. And what do you want me to do? I bought the kit from Home Depot and it only has two plugs. On. I'm not going to add it. I'm not going to take apart the integral injection molded thing and put an earth on it. I don't know how to do that. It's not, it doesn't even now it's, now it's all hot glued together, so it's even safer. <laughs> yeah. I've been an electrician for 100 years. I've never seen I'm like, I bought it from the store. You can go on the internet and buy it. Uh, well, what do these people do if they buy a lab and rewire it? Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, All right. So we do have a topic for this week. Um, Adam Grant and I spent a lot of time throwing topics around and we didn't want to land on something that was too restrictive. So we, we found ourselves coming back a lot to mentors and mentorship in general. So both being a mentor, I feel like a lot of us in the maker community, since we're all, I mean, as this podcast shows, since we're all spread out, a lot of us find mentors and someone who might be like halfway across the world. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I feel like there's a lot there. And, and what I mentioned earlier, it's kind of funny. Um, I, I said, I, um, I discovered Jimmy through Nick's book, Good Clean Fun. And I saw that picture in your basement. And it reminded me immediately of my grandpa, who is a huge mentor for me. Um, he had this house in the woods in New Hampshire. And you walk into his basement and it's like the situation room. There's screens everywhere. He has his bridge port. He has his metal lathe complete mess i think there's about 40 guns down there Uh, no one really knows exactly how many um and he knows exactly where everything is and i would go down there on a summer day and he would just be like hey morley do you want to see how a a shortwave radio works and then we'd spend an afternoon kind of like scanning through the channels in a shortwave radio and like the more i think back on it i'm like wow like he really got me into like taking what what was what did he do for a living he was an electrical engineer by training. He had a, a bit of a trouble hanging, holding down consistent work. He had a bit of a strong personality. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, he did, he did a lot of um, freelance work as an electrical engineer. Uh, very, very interesting guy. And kind of like Andy Pugh talks about this a lot, like as a maker, viewing the world as a hackable space. And I think he kind of showed me that as like, because mm-hmm. he would like, we'd come over with a weed whacker that was broken and he'd kind of like test everything take the carburetor apart um yeah he was a massive mentor for me and i think one of the big reasons that i found myself i eventually studied engineering and realized i wanted something that was more hands-on hmm. um, interesting yeah. anyways well so i'll this. go last sorry i said i'll talk i'll talk about my mental last okay go. let's go well, like I grant or adam do you sorry go on I think it's good to start with maybe helping with a de- definition of mentor to make mm-hmm. sure we're all on the same page uh, or so that we can see what differences we might think of mentors and then maybe chatting about who our mentors uh, might be. Thanks for keeping me grounded, Grant. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I, for me, like I think about a mentor, like there's there's different ways of looking at it, but I think a lot of it comes down to, you know, it's a reciprocal relationship where the person sees potential in you and wants to share their knowledge and skills. Um, But at the same time, I can see it as, you know, you can think 
you know, there's some more informal mentorship that can go along with just, you know, like your grandfather. That's a great story, but he would, he obviously saw potential in you, but you didn't like sign a mentor agreement. No, or it something was very like that, you know? Yeah. Uh, he so there's just like planted a, the seeds. Yeah. What are other people's no, go thoughts? On, go on. Anyone else have any thoughts? I, um, I personally like never really had a mentor. I mean, I suppose I could turn around and say my mentors are more like the people I watch on YouTube and, and that sort of stuff. I mean, growing up, I was always interested in making and, and all that. And then I think the mentor side more came with the actual YouTubing itself, like making videos and stuff. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Just always been interested in making things. I didn't really have, um, I didn't have a dad or anyone like push me to it or anything. I yeah. Know. I mean, a lot of my making, I've talked about this before, a lot of my making from my childhood wasn't through any mentorship. It was building forts in the woods and janky skateboard ramps that were, were at questionable safety. <laughs> um, Plus with the days. Yeah. Wait, yeah, but I know I agree. I think a lot of, we just talked at the same time. I don't know what you said. <laughs> I said you still did that when you were a kid. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, <laughs> Childhoods didn't change that much between ours. <laughs> now, there's there's actually a funny story where like me and my cousin. This brings my grandpa back into it again. But me and my cousin were like ten years old or so, and we were in his backyard and like the woods behind his house, and we wanted to build a fort and we cut down like a whole grove of saplings in our ten year old brains, not realizing that like we're ruining this new growth in the summer. And he came back and he was so mad about us. He's like, I've been waiting for this to grow back for years. And we just had oh, zero. Uh, it just didn't even cross our minds. Uh, <laughs> yeah, anyways. But no, I agree. I think a lot of the mentors I find in my making does come through, does come through like the maker community online. And people I see on YouTube. Um, I just, uh, I didn't realize, I didn't have anything important to say. I was muted for a minute while I was shifting around, but I didn't say anything important, but, um, <laughs> I'm looking at like, why is my line flat? But, uh, <laughs> like nobody's interrupting me. I'm babbling. But, uh, what I was going to say was for, uh, mentoring, I'm sitting here thinking my dad was probably my biggest mentor because uh, as I've said in many interviews, my father always just put tools in my hands. He saw more in me than I knew to see in myself. He would always, he bought me chisels, grinders, uh, Dremel tools, you know, not even, uh, I remember getting like a real Dremel Dremel tool, but prior to that, we had one from Sears and the tip would always get locked and we'd have to put a pair of vice grips on it to undo the, the collet. And, but my dad was always encouraging me to, to use tools. And then as I got into art school, as I got into rather into got into regular school, and my art teachers all started to to recognize my potential before I even knew uh, that I was like I'll say different. I didn't. I just I always just did things with my hands. You know, it was just very very natural to me. In kindergarten, people were always say, "Let Jimmy do it, let Jimmy do it," and I was like, oh, "I'm just doing what everybody does." And I started to realize as I got older that not everybody does what I do. But mentors come in the way of teachers. I think I remember one of one of my first teachers was a guy named Mr. Shimenti, which is a crazy name. But Mr. Shimenti was uh, – he saw in me as like a young carpenter and he would encourage me to use clay and wood and stuff. And he wasn't even an art teacher. He was just like a regular teacher. And then as I got into – more art classes, my art teachers all encouraged me. I, re I remember all my art teachers. And then when I got into high school, one of my art teachers who's still alive, I see him from time to time because now we have some mutual friends, which is really crazy. Uh, oh, wow. He, I saw him in picture. I'm like, that was my art teacher in high school 35 years ago. He's like an old hip guy. And uh, he, he got me to see things a little bit more artsy. He, he would lived in Manhattan and he would take a train to the city to be uh, to be an art teacher, so he was like the only one. Like he was the only per he was like the first person that I met in high school that had any connection to Manhattan, in a, in like from an artistic point of view. Hmm. Um, I thought Manhattan was in the city, so 
Back. Yeah, no, I grew up I grew up 25 miles. I grew up 25 miles away from New York. Okay. So I grew up in the suburbs, 25 miles away from New York. I mean, as soon as I got old enough to drive, we spent a lot of time in the city. You know, we could always hop on public transportation, but it wasn't until I was like in my early 20s that I actually moved there to live there. But growing up in elementary school and high school, like anybody from the city was like, they may, they may as well have been from, from Mars because we lived in such a little crummy little suburb. I've always found that wild about like Long Island and New York, like how close they are, but how different they are. Actually, upstate New York too. It's like you have three yeah. distinct worlds. Yeah. In a small area. It's funny. It's like a, go ahead. Isn't it just like a river that splits them? Uh, well, yeah, r- there, there's uh, Manhattan Island and then you have Long Island. And Manhattan's really tiny compared to Long Island. Like Manhattan's 13, like 13 miles by like three miles at its widest. Yeah. And and Long Island is like 130 miles by like 50 miles wide, something like that. I only know from what I see on TV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, it's funny. Long Island, it's like it may as well be Madagascar when it comes to like politics and culture because it just like broke off and moved five feet away, but it's a thousand miles away. <laughs> Robert it's Moses. Unbelievable, like the difference between the people. Like, like I would, I live in Manhattan most of my adult life and I'd go out to Long Island like 10 miles away and I'd be like hanging out with my stepmother and she'd be like, you're going to drive all the way back to the city tonight? Why don't you stay at your mother's house? Get a bed at your mother. Where are you going to go? I'm like, it's 10 miles away. It's like, what are you telling it's me? Like people with you? In, it's like people in England that think everything's really far apart. And you're like, you're all guys are on a tiny island. They come to the American <laughs> West. <laughs> yeah. So like just people on Long Island think Manhattan is like a million miles away. And it's like upstate now. Like I got to go to Home Depot to buy a screw. I hop in my car, I drive 30 miles. Takes me thirty minutes. I don't even think about it. But in Long Island, if you had to drive thirty miles, it'd be like, "You're going all the way to Sea Cliff. What's wrong with you? There's not a store nearby." It's just uh, everybody on Long Island, they're, they're, they're the brain the size of a pea, and I can say that because I grew up there. So <laughs> send your hate mail to like, these guys, not me. I gotta my say, one of the things- shop is like half an hour away as well. <laughs> say it again. This is my closest shop's like half an hour away. This is completely normal for Australia. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you know, up in upstate New York now. And it's funny, you, you you travel around. We'll get back on mentorship in a minute. Well, I'll stop no, making fun of all the provincial, yeah. regional areas of my life. But <laughs> when you when you bounce around upstate New York, now I'm 100 miles north of the New York City. When you bounce around, you meet people and right away you have like a connection. You could chit chat, you could talk, you got a, an easy flowing conversation. Oh, really? Where'd you grow up? I grew up in Queens. Oh, really? Oh, I grew up in Brooklyn. I grew up Anybody from the city, even people from Long Island are a little bit more easy to grease with. And then you meet somebody, then they're like a weirdo. You're like, why would you even have a garage sale if you're not even going to like talk or interact, look at the ground? You know, this is how you meet people here. <laughs> like, bro, I'm going to have to get a lot of money for that. I'm like, oh, well, you had a garage sale. Just put a price on it. It's going to be a lot of money. I'm going to have to get $20 for that. Those are the type of people that grew up up here. They were like born in their farm. The townies. Yeah. And like, well, you must be from the city. Well, that's expensive. You know? I got to say, like, working from a very small space, one of the things I love about living in a city is just, like, I can hop on my bike, go to Home Depot, like, literally a five-minute bike ride away and grab some random screw. It's so convenient. Like, I, I, eventually, I would like to have a full-size shop, likely not in a city, but my, with my current situation – of like not really having a full size shop, just being able to like, like yeah, we used to hop on the subway and go up to the. Uh, we used to hop on the subway, go to Twenty Third Street, and go into the Home Depot. You guys want to know a stupid little story? Did you guys watch the movie Big? Yeah, with Tom remember Hanks. the movie Big with Tom Hanks? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, the office that he would be bouncing around in the the white office where he was like in his toy business job. It was Mattel. No, I'm sorry. It was Hasbro. It was Hasbro's corporate office in New York. And when they gave it up shortly after the movie was shot there, they turned that into the Home Depot in Manhattan. Oh, wow. So <laughs> when I go to the Home Depot, I'm in the, the office that used to be Hasbro that was used in the movie Big. 
So that was his like apartment where he's jumping on the trampoline. No, that was his apartment. But like when he was at the office with the uh, with the with the characters, like when he's remember he's like bouncing around a building. He's like a building can't be an action figure. This is like who wants to play with a building? Like then when he's in those meetings, that was in the Hasbro office, which is now the Home Depot. It was the first Home Depot in Manhattan. Now I think there's two on the island of Manhattan, but there's a lot in Queens and Brooklyn. Getting back to mentors, I just – it's funny. Uh, today is – today was announced in the news that Milton Glaser died. Milton Glaser was a, a very big graphic designer in New York and his class that he taught was at the school that I taught at. And I got to meet him over the years a few times and we never became friends, friends. You could tell he met so many people that when he met you, he was just – you know. I guess I do the same thing. I meet so many people now because of – the me moving around and going to different shows you, you know you, you you're likely to remember somebody but you're also likely to forget them so every time i met milton glazer i could see that he was meeting me for the first time in his mind and it was like the third or fourth time i was meeting him but that didn't matter because he was such an influential artist and his he, he's got lots of great quotes anyway he passed away at 91 he lived a really good life and he was very productive and he's always been one of my inspirations. He came up with the I Love New York logo. Now, oh, wow. you think, oh, that's like, what a big deal, big deal. What a, but he was the first person, I believe, I hope I'm not talking out of, out of school. He was the first person, I believe, to use a heart as the symbol for the word love. Oh, so that's he was, so interesting. You know, it, that's like such, that is so obvious, you know, in the entire life, you guys, you guys are all younger than me. The entire lives you guys led, nearly the entire life I led, that has been iconic symbolism. You know, yeah. I love, I heart this, I heart that. He was the person, I think, who saw that discovery and said, oh, why don't we use a symbol in place of the word love, the symbol of the heart? I'm guessing. I mean, maybe I'm wrong. But even if I love did, New York was, was the first thing. What? Even if he didn't come up with it originally, he popularized it. Yeah, it's like, yeah, that's right. You know, like MP3 players, it's they weren't invented by Steve Jobs and Apple, but mm-hmm. because of the iPod, they became the thing. You know? Yeah. So uh, Milton Glaser also started New York Magazine and a couple of other real iconic things. And uh, just scrolling, Taylor's much younger than me, but today when I was just scrolling through some of the art, the articles on his death and just some of his artwork when we were having breakfast this morning, I was like, look, he did this. She's like, oh, my God, he did that? Oh my God, he invented that typeface. Oh my God. Like, this is like, he's so prolific. There's so many things that are ingrained in pop culture that you just wouldn't, you just don't, you just, you just think it's always been there. But when you realize the person who invented it or designed it or created it has passed away, all these things start to become, you know, highlighted. Mm-hmm. Anyway, he's always been uh, a mentor to me. And then uh, a teacher that I had at the School of Visual Arts directly who was, really responsible for me being the person I became, my, my friend Kevin, who's still alive. He's only 10 years older than me, and he's very young at heart. So every time I meet him, I feel like I'm meeting somebody that I graduated with. Kevin was uh, Kevin O'Callaghan. I've talked about him before, too. He He's the head of the 3D design department at the School of Visual Arts, and I worked under him for nearly 24 years as a teacher. But I was his student, and Kevin was a – he really taught me and David Welder. Some of you guys might know David Welder was my assistant for many years. David's now on his own. But David and I both had Kevin 20 years apart. Oh, and, cool. Mm. And that's why I always thought, like, me and Dave always felt like we had a little bit of an advantage. And Dave, I wish David was still making YouTube videos. He's taking time off. But he just put one David, out. He just oh, put he did? One out today. Yeah. Get out of here. You put one out today? <laughs> yeah. Get the I hell. love David's videos. I got to so- check it out. <laughs> But what I was going to say is Dave, David David, and I both like kind of realized like we had a little bit – like we kind of maybe were being a little conceited New Yorkers. But we felt we had a little bit of, a, of an advantage because we both had Kevin as a teacher. And Kevin is like kind of a very dynamic guy. Some people love him. Some people hate him. But love him or hate him, he really instilled in me and David the importance of concept and developing an interesting, strong concept. And almost the build is secondary to having a strong concept. And I'm going to use Dave's example of – he found an umbrella. One of his videos, he found an umbrella in the garbage and he turned it into a kite. And I told him, I was like, that is like one of the most poetic, powerful videos that <laughs> that that I've seen anybody make. And that's really cool. And I told David, I go, you gotta just work on that. You gotta just like 
transform things that are mundane into beautiful art objects, you know, so poetically the way he did that. And, you know, I'm not saying he, he wouldn't have come up with that if he hadn't met Kevin, but Kevin kind of instilled in us that idea of concept and coming up with interesting concepts and looking for, you know, something fun and interesting and beautiful and creative yeah. in everyday objects. That is so true. Cause I find like you can spend so much time just working and not working productively. You know, like if I just, sometimes it's like you just take a day to just ideate and sketch out and find that concept. That's like really, really interesting. I just feel like, so I don't know, some people like myself included, you feel like you to be productive, you need to be completing things. And it's, it's a kind of tough change of pace to really try to make yourself like brainstorm and ideate. Mm-hmm. And- no, it's, you know, it's just as important as making things. That's why I don't have my notebook right in front of me, but that's why it's important to always keep notes and keep a notebook and jot things down. This is a notebook in front of me. That's full. This is, I have a lot of these little ShopBot. I, I went to a sh- an event where ShopBot was there and they had, the, they gave away these notebooks. It took like, two thick handfuls of them when nobody was looking I stole them. <laughs> but they're good little pocketbooks and they fit in my wallet really well. They're the same size as a passport. Here's my passport. They're the same size as a passport. So they fit in my wallet, which is like a passport book. Oh, well, he's got what's up. Got this it's time for Grant to tell us he won Instructables. <laughs> well, yeah, oh, so you guys all have them. That's great. <laughs> Grant, the Instructables king. Yeah. I just use my phone. Yeah, yeah that's and true then, too. And but... then I like to use this pen. Uh, Ah, oh, look at you. Yeah. Gonna give you, a, gonna give you one geeking. of my membership cards. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, brother. Got the rest of Sharpie there. Yeah. yeah, no, it's, uh, you know, I think it's important to jot ideas down. And, you know, another another mentor of mine, very important person in my life was my was my uh, teacher, Mark. Mark Seta Ducati was a, one of my teachers at the School of Visual Arts. Just he was at the very end. So I met him at the second to last semester. I met him, yeah, just at the second, yeah, the la- the second semester of my last year, I met Mark, and he became a very close friend of mine. He still is. He's a toy inventor and a magician and a magic inventor, and he really, between him and Kevin, if I hadn't met those two guys, I don't think I would be who I am today. Mark really, really pushed me into being an inventor, and he saw in me what I, again, you know, still was just like, I was like a, I was like a hatchling, just walking around, just barely with feathers, just trying to figure it out. And he's like, what you should be as an inventor. You should really be an inventor. You have a great mind for thinking up fun, interesting ideas. And, you know, between Kevin talking about concept all the time and Mark always talking about the invention, I really feel those guys sculpted me and really helped me get on my own path. And, uh, yeah, these are and one thing that Mark really instilled in me. He said, "Get to know the people that are you're interested in." And I remembered, like, thinking to myself, "This was before I was traveled at all. I was still at school." Mark would be like, "Oh, I'm going to Europe to go meet uh, this guy or that guy or this guy, or that guy." I'm like, "Like he's me, he, like one of his closest friends. I, I wish I could remember the gentleman's name. He was in a mentor of magic. Didn't even speak English. I go, "What do you guys do?" He goes, "We just hang out and do magic tricks." <laughs> I'm like, "You guys can't even talk to each other." He's like, "We have translators." He goes, "But we just show each other magic tricks." But that almost uh, be the best way to like, yeah, and then you can just, it's just visual and yeah, active. it's like pure. So, uh, I, Mark really put in me, you know, get to know the people. And, and you know, I've tweeted at and I've DM se- several people on Instagram. Some get back to you, some don't. And I'm talking about just like, like I remember when I met, I met Colin Furs at the last event in England with the last, uh, Maker Maker Central. Central. Yeah. And uh, I was like so blown away just like hanging out in his booth. And I was really, I was like a puppy dog star hanging out with him. And he was showing me this thing and showing me that thing. And his booth was full because he lives nearby. So he brought like an 18 wheeler full of things to put in his booth. And uh, and then at one point he said, you know, like your videos. And I'm like, you know who I am? (laughs) He goes, yeah, I know who you are. I'm like, you what? You know who I I was so like, because I didn't expect he would have any idea who I was because, you know, I don't have 10 million followers. But uh, I was- It's actually really crazy to think that someone like you has that experience still. Oh, I do all the time. has the same experience. Say it again. I'm sure he still has the same experience too, even with the 10 million followers he has. Yeah. Many it is now. 
No, you know, I tell you what, you know, when I, I swear at that same event, I was like kind of nervous and I'm getting like tingly now a little bit thinking about when I met Yuri Tuckman. You guys watch Yuri Tuckman? Yeah. I, he cracks me up. I think he's one of the funniest personalities. And I like, he's not even trying to be funny. And when I met him, I said, Yo, he goes, hey, Jimmy, hey, how are you? How are you doing? Nice to meet you. I, I, big fan, big fan. And his accent and just his mannerisms crack me up. And I just think he's he's just like an old world genius. And and when I knew he was going to be there, I was like, oh my god, I got to meet Colin first. I'm going to meet Yuri Tuckman. And he's like, he doesn't he didn't even have a hundred thousand subscribers when I met him. You know, he's just such a like when I see people like like YouTube was made for like people like Yuri and Colin because they just do not fit into regular society. <laughs> like they would never be on a TV show because the producers just didn't know, like the creativity would be like beyond them. They wouldn't even know what to do with them, you know? Yeah. And so, uh, so well, that's a, that brings a good point of, do you think that you might be a mentor to people? Oh, honestly, I mean, I know that I am. I, I mean, I've gotten explicit written notes and, I get, you know, tear jerk emails every day and so many people say they wouldn't be doing what they're doing if it wasn't for me. And that's, it's like the greatest honor, honestly. It's like, I remember, like I say this often, I started doing YouTube because I wanted to like stick it to the TV business and be like, look what you're missing. I'm so amazing. You guys could all go screw yourselves. And then when I started getting emails like that, you know, I, I you know, some of the most heart touching emails are ones from veterans that say, you know, I'm a combat veteran and I'm a wounded combat veteran and I watch your I watch your videos because they calm me down. You know, stuff like that. It's just you know, it can make me cry now. It's just so amazing. And then I started to realize I have a bigger responsibility. And uh, you know, that's why I only curse on the Fits All podcast, because I just <laughs> big response. No, so that's that's I really feel like I have a bigger responsibility here. I'm not just showing off and you know, I respect that responsibility and and uh, I'm honored to have that position and, and I'm more than happy to share everything that I do as long as somebody can get something out of it. You guys know I'm kind of like a little tongue in cheek. I share a little bit of my personal life only because I think it could be inspiring to other people. You know, like me and Taylor have fights like every other, you know, husband and wife or boyfriend and girlfriend. But, you know, stuff like that, it's, it's like kind of, you know, like I don't show any of that stuff. Like, right. I just show the fun stuff because, you know, people are like, oh, you're going to edit your perfect life. I'm like, why would I show a fight or why would I show a bad dinner? <laughs> it's pointless. You only want to show positivity, you know. Yeah. Everybody has all that stuff. You just kind of hope that you could just kind of work your way through it and you have more positive experience than negative experiences and life just grows. But when I realize I have that responsibility, I, you know, I definitely take it serious. So in, um, in saying that, do you have anyone that you mentor like – in person like no i like instead of like getting um, an email like do you have like say for instance me like I, I don't have a mentor growing up but i want to be a mentor to my kids yeah no absolutely i mean there have been some young young youngsters that have come to my shop over the years um this one kid from brooklyn this uh this one kid he's very religious uh, jewish kid he would come to my shop and he'd always have to leave at a certain time because he had to get home before uh, you know certain holidays that were taking place in the Jewish community, and uh, he was great. I think of him from time to time. I haven't talked to him in a bit, but he would always he just emailed me and it's like, "Hey, can I come to your shop? I'll take the subway." And he would come and become part of Brandon was his name. He would come and hang out a little bit here and there. I haven't talked to him in a while. Um, there's been a few uh, right now, right across the street from my shop. There's a place called the Milk Run and. Anybody that's been to the classes knows the milk run. And there was a young girl that worked at the milk run. Her name is Katie. And Katie is, uh, was in between like places to live and in between school. And she's going back to college in September. So Taylor's like took her in. We have 13 bedrooms in this house. This house used to be wow. a boarding house. So we have 13 bedrooms in this house. And when we do the classes, they fill up. And we didn't schedule any classes this summer with COVID. So Taylor's like, hey, can, can we just have Katie come stay at the house? She'll help us out with stuff. And Katie is a really skilled artist. And yeah. so since she's been here, I taught her how to use the printing presses. I'm teaching her how to hand make a book right away. She's like, I want to make my own book. She helped me with these, these, these my leather bound books that I've been selling. I, have, I happen to have one of them right here. She's been helping me. Um, 
I taught her how to do the book bodies. So I'm doing you know, the binding and she's sewing the book bodies, like sewing the stitching here. And I'm showing her how to put them together. So I'm definitely, uh, you know, not in an explicit way, but I'm definitely mentoring her. Yeah. Because she's, yeah. Uh, I'm giving her like full hands on things to do. My, my girlfriend, Eden, her parents have always made a point of, like, so they have, they have three kids and their kids are mostly grown up there in their twenties and all out on their own. And they've always made a point of taking in um, like young artists mm -hmm. and kids who are, who are trying to find their way and, and like want to live in Toronto and pursue their, whatever they're pursuing here. And I've, I, I, I never like, I mean, I'm young, I'm 23 and I, I never really like, considered that as a thing that like people do. And I was like, wow, that's a really amazing Thing to do and like very inspirational to me i was like that's such a big thing to give to someone in a city that has a very high cost of living um they've also always made it a point to like buy young artists art and mm -hmm. that's cool i think that's it's such a it's such a great thing to do to to recognize mm -hmm. those young people and oh you mean things. buy buy the artists like the, the work they create yeah both both so like letting them <laughs> the way you house. worded it no the way you worded it was like i bought you a piece of art <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, a little too stream of consciousness. No, yeah. like, like for one, letting them live in their house, and the other is, is decorating their house with their art. Yeah, yeah. you know, there, there, there's also been many times where fans uh, said, "Hey, I'm, I'm going to be in the city. Can I come and spend the day in your shop?" And they're like, "Yeah, come on. I can't guarantee it'll be fun because you know, just a cross section of my shop. Some day it's me just sitting there filling out mail. Some day it's me making really something, something super interesting." Someday it's but just, you know, meetings all day long with people on the phone. At least they'll get like a broken ice pick out of the deal. That's right. <laughs> Everybody leaves with a, with a second uh, rejected ice pick <laughs> or a misprint poster. That's what everybody wants. Everyone comes to the shop to like, give me something that's screwed up. Give me something that's broken. I'm like, you can have this. Do you find it, do you find it difficult to maintain those boundaries when you have such a large group of people who feel like, they kind of know you to a certain extent through your videos, but you you might not have any idea who they are. Uh, no, you know, honestly, it doesn't bother me. I'm very welcoming um, as long as they're not odd. Like today, just a guy just walked up to the shop because my shop is in a little complex. It's a small complex. There's like five things to choose from. You can go to the flea market. You can go to Ed the Can Man. You can go to the, the auction house or you can go to the Tip Top Furniture, which is my landlord. Or you can go to me. So that's about five different things that people walk into the parking lot. And sometimes they're just like looking for a place to go to the bathroom and they don't know where to go. And sometimes they're looking for a place to buy a drink. Sometimes they leave the flea market and they think the flea market goes into every spot. So eventually they come to me. They're like, what are you selling? I'm like, I'm not selling anything. <laughs> and uh, so some guy stopped to go to the flea market today. And he saw one of my antique machines in my foyer. Even He was about to pull out and he walked over and he goes, what do you, he goes, what do, you do with these machines? He said, my friend just bought a hotel and we're looking for like interesting, fun things to like decorate in the lobby. I said, oh, I, I buy these. I collect them. I said, sometimes I fix them up. And he goes, well, how much would something like this be fixed up? I said, I don't sell anything. I said, I just fix it up. He goes, well, then why do you fix it up? I go, how do you make money? I go, I fix it up and I make a video of me fixing it up. And the video is going to buy it. <laughs> it's so hard to tell people that and like – but the reason I bring that up is because he walked in and he was like completely like blown away by like the oddball nature of my shop and that I wasn't just a straight, you know, fix this, make that for money guy. And he was so enamored and I welcomed him in and he came in and he was just like, he was so inspired. It was really sweet to just like welcome him in and, you know, give him like a, just give him like a little inspiration. I knew it was like completely not what he expected. And so I kind of, Jazzed it up a little bit. I gave him my card. I said, you know, I go, I got some stuff on YouTube. Go look me up on YouTube. I didn't say it. I got like 1.7 million followers. <laughs> I just said, yeah, I have a couple of videos on YouTube. Go check them out. He's like, oh, well, go look it up. So anyway. So you say it the exact same way that I say it to people, but I say it to that way, like, because I have so few followers. <laughs> <laughs> no, so he's, he's going to walk off, look you up and go, holy crap. <laughs> He uh, and now his friend has just bought this beautiful. Vi I know exactly what he's like. We just came from Skahari. My friend bought the uh, this, uh, this. I forget the name of the hotel, but I know what he's talking about. 
he, and we're going to fix it up and we want like vintage stuff. And that's why he's like stopped at the flea market on the way home, like inspired. And uh, he was happy he stopped in. So I said, if you want any oddball, weird stuff, seeing seed signs, anything, you know, I love that old style. And so now I, I think I made a friend for life by not being like, oh, we don't sell nothing. Yeah. <laughs> you know, being like, a, like if I was like a farm boy that grew up up here, I'd be like, you stay away. Don't, don't go near me. You know, as opposed to being like an open cultured New Yorker, I like to think of myself as and someone that's socialized with everybody in all different cultures. And my cat's got inside here. <laughs> my cat was just trying to get at my 3D printer. <laughs> I was gonna say, we're used to hearing Molly's cat anyway. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's a good that's a great way of approaching it because you know you're gonna get all these people come out to you, but so coming receiving it from a place of positivity and kindness. Yeah. And then some people just walk up and they're like, I'm here to pick up my mattress. I go, Oh, you got to go around the back. What do you do here? I go, I make stuff. He goes, okay, I'm going to get my mattress. I'm like, okay, cool. <laughs> it's very, very matter of fact. Yeah. You know, people are like, ah, uh, this is where I get my mattress. Cause my, my landlord, <laughs> my landlord owns a showroom in a little town nearby called Freehold. And he has a, a huge showroom in this little town, Freehold. It's like three things in it. His showroom is one of the three things. And so you go into Freehold, you buy a mattress, and then he gives you a ticket. And then you drive five miles away to where my complex is because he owns like 30,000 square feet. And you pick your mattress up from the factory. But you got to drive around my building to go to his building is in the back. <laughs> so people always you stop know. at my building and they go – I'm here to get my mattress. Like, what do you make? I don't see any mattresses here. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly not a mattress warehouse. <laughs> you should totally make a mattress. Like, yeah. <laughs> so it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, it, I remember it took about mentors. Luther was my bus driver when I was a kid. I, every day I'd get up at like six o'clock through ninth, 10th, 11th, no, 10, 11th, and 12th grade. I don't know if you guys have the same grading system in Canada. So 10th. Canada. Canada. So 10th, 11th, and 12th grade. I would wake up and get on a bus at like six in the morning and I'd spend half my day at another school. And Luther was my bus driver, this older black gentleman. He looked and acted a lot like, uh, who's the, uh, the African-American actor that played God. Everyone loves him. Oh, Morgan, Morgan Freeman. Freeman. He was very much like Morgan Freeman, but young. And Luther was such a sweet guy. And he would say he would be nice to everybody that like every red light, he would wave at everybody. And and I remember, I'm like, do you know that guy? And he's like, no, I'm just being nice because being nice is free. And it was oh, just like so great. sweet. And, yeah, he said that to me when I was in like ninth grade. And I remember, like I still, I still think of Luther like when I say hello to somebody – for no apparent reason. Like, we just like, well, hey, how are you? And I, like, I re- remember Luther, like, telling me, like, it's okay to just say hello to strangers. Just, you know, being nice doesn't cost anything. Yeah. So, there you go. That's my little touching moment. We can all cry after. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, speaking of touching moments and mentors, I, I host this weekly kind of maker Zoom hangout. And um, Grant is a, is a regular face there. So I came on this week and I was, I had a, a possible job to do at a synagogue where basically repairing a bunch of pews mm-hmm. and I didn't really realize the scale of the project until I started talking about it with the group and everyone started coming back at me with like all this wisdom and advice. And I mean, I don't have a lot of maker friends and like my day-to-day friends, but this group of people from all around the world collectively allowed me to come to like an amazing decision. And like I, I view all you guys as like one big collective mentor. It's just oh, that's like, fantastic. That's what, you know, it's really great point. I do too. You know, like if I have something complicated, I'll write this old Tony a message and I'll say, hey, what do you think about this? And he'll give me some great advice or he'll like, I'll send this old Tony a question. He'll send me back like a 3D model. Like, it's a 3D <laughs> model. They're like, we'll spin in space. Like I'm, I'm like. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm talking about. You know, so it, it's great. I, if I have a question about lathing or one thing, I, I'll ask, uh, you know, a bomb or <laughs> lathing, <laughs> turning, turning a machine, turning. I'll, I'll ask a bomb, and you know, he's always so free and, and easygoing, and you know, it's great to just have open communication with everybody around the world. It's it's fantastic. Mm-hmm. You know, of course, Andrew and Eric, 
just like we're constantly talking every day. Uh, Andrew Blacksmith Tools and Eric from Hantel Rescue and Bob and Dave, you know, these, we're always chit chatting. We talked today about Milton Glazer dying, going back and forth. And, you know, it's, it is really just a, a, just a, it's, it's such a wonderful community. I wish that I got to experience it like maybe in my early thirties or my late twenties, you know, as opposed to like in my mid forties, now I'm 43. So it's been about seven solid years that I've been in this community. I started about eight or nine years on YouTube, but I just wish I had it a lot longer in my life because it's just so, it's so heartwarming, you know? Yeah. yeah. You know, I meet you guys for two minutes and then someone's like, Hey, you want to be my podcast? I'm like, yeah, sure. Fuck it. Let's do it. <laughs> and then I cancel on you and you're all like, fuck. <laughs> You didn't. No, it's okay. You po- you postponed. It was okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I just pushed it off. I try to give you guys a wide girth. I'm like, I don't know who's going to be on this or where they're from. I hope they could figure out. Give you like it's a twelve hour window. It's a pandemic. I got lots of schedule flexibility. Yeah. <laughs> where do I got to be? Yeah. No. So thank you for accommodating me. But you know, it's just it. It really is like the community is a mentor in a way. It's a great. It's a great metaphor. And it's the truth. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Yep. And, you know, the fans, too. The fans make me want to do better and bigger and better. The fans and, you know, my contemporaries. I'll I'll see somebody using the shaper and I'll be like, wow, they did great results with that thing. How come How come I'm scared to use that? And then I see something like, you know what? I shouldn't be scared to use it. Let me get to it, you know? Mm-hmm. Well, one thing I can say is that you as a mentor, you, you gave like a little speech at the Bear Mountain Boats uh, thing. And that's where I met you at the Maker's Rendezvous. And uh, Mm -hmm. the one thing you said was, like, look for opportunities and take them. Mm. And that was, like, the best piece of advice for someone who, like, my immediate go-to is always no. No matter what it is, I say, like, whatever someone says, I go, no, there's here's a thousand reasons why we can't do that. (laughs) (laughs) Now, is that just insecurity, you think? Yes. Completely, like... You're afraid you're going to fail. You're afraid you're going to upset them. You're afraid you're going to not do well with their money or something like that. It, whatever it is, it, there's a million. Re- there's I'm like I've been there. That, yeah, like anything <laughs> bad can happen. I'm afraid of it, and I've thought That's it through and, and seen it. And there's only like one good outcome. It's like how it goes well, but there's a Stay thousand away. bad out- outcomes. <laughs> like, like- <laughs> really good outcomes. Well, you know, it's funny. I I I, got, I started getting over that out of survival because in New York. You know, uh, I got out of the toy business just because it became frustrating to me. And I started doing interior design and I was doing a lot of interior design. And then it got to the point where like, hey, can you do this? Can you do that? And I would just be like, oh, wow, that's a big budget. Okay, I could do that, you know. And then (laughs) I would always remind myself if I fail horribly, I could always just give them their down payment back and just say, I'm sorry I did this. You know, as long as I don't like like rip up their bathroom floor, you know, like I never did anything like that. That's too complicated for me. But if I was doing a built-in, and let's say it turned out that nobody liked it or that the color was horribly wrong, that was the other thing I did. I, I would always just kill them with kindness. Say, for instance, you know, I, I oh, so going back, I could always give my money back. I could always say, you know what, here's your money back. I'm sorry, this was a failure. I, I I'm sorry that I wasted everyone's time. And then nobody gets hurt and it's no big deal. You know, you just suck it up and walk away. Uh, and, and there are other times where I bring in like a built-in and they'd be like, ooh, that's that's the color I chose? Ooh, I picked that color? I'm like, well, here's the swatch. You know, I always keep it nearby with their name on it. So they like, this is the swatch you signed. And you put it on there. You're like, see, it's the same color. Like, oh, it's hard. I'm like, well, you know what? Live with it for a week. If you want, we'll come take it away and we'll repaint it. And then the inconvenience, they're never going to call you back, right? <laughs> and then they're like, oh, really? I'm like, yeah. And they're like, cool. And then they never call. I'm like, well, it's fine. It's, I don't want to bother you. But if I would have been like, that's the color you picked. you got you got to take Then they would be like, I want the color I want. And then all of a sudden there's a fight. But when I was like, oh, if you want me to, I'll repaint it whatever color you want. Just let me know. We'll come get it. And they're like, oh, my God, he's so nice. I don't want to hurt his feelings. You know what? It's fine. <laughs> And that's just like stupid tricks you learn when you. And then if they really did want me to repaint it, I, you know, it's like they can't all be home runs. You know that you lose money every once in a long while on a job. You got to yeah. redo it. You got to. But I'm obviously paying my rent and paying my mortgage, so you know it. it but again, that's it works out more often than it doesn't work out. Say it again. Again, that's that word of mouth thing again, though. Like it, if you're that 
person that's just like, oh, well, too bad. That's what you chose. They're going to be like, yep. Fuck you. But if you if you say, oh, I'll repaint it for you, then they're going to turn around and say, oh, go with this guy. He, I didn't like the color and he repainted it for me. Like no issues. Like yeah. they're going to. I didn't like it. the color and he said he would repaint it for me and that was all I needed. So you know what? He's a nice guy. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. So I, I had a f- kind of serendipitous thing happen on the topic of mentorship when I was um, earlier this year when I was kind of realized I was like, oh, working in set building and prop building would be really cool. And I started calling around places. I was telling this, <clears throat> sorry, I was telling this story earlier today and I was coming from like a, like working in engineering and like just graduated university. So I was calling places like very like, like hi, was, I'm looking to see if you're uh, looking to expand your team. And it was, it was very outside of the setting of like working in like a shop. And so I called this one guy and he was like, nope, we're not interested. And I was like, oh, you're, you're not looking to hire anyone? He basically hung up on me. I was like, that was kind of he wasn't funny. looking to expand his team. No, but then about one minute later, I got a call back and he's like, are you looking for a job? And I said, yeah, I'm, I'm looking to work in a shop. And he's like, uh, I was like, oh, I thought you were like a headhunter. I thought you, I thought you were looking, <laughs> looking to like drop a – a recruit on me is like, uh, yeah, like we're looking, always looking for new guys. Why don't you come on by? And that ended up being the place where I started working and set building just because he had a feeling uh, that like that interaction didn't quote quite right. And that actually has been like that whole shop of like super experienced carpenters and guys who've been working in the film event and museum industry was like an amazing team of mentors. And it wouldn't have happened had he not decided to call me back kind of out of the goodness of his heart and a little bit of a feeling. Yeah, that's great. There's always those moments like that we could all circle in in our history timeline where you know things could have gone one way or another, or because they went this way, these other five events happened, which were all good and fun, you know. And it's nice to recognize those moments, and it's even more nice to be able to recognize them while they're happening, you know. It's those moments where you're like meeting somebody, and you could be like, oh, it's my god you ever see the saturday night live where the girl goes oh my god <laughs> yeah it's gonna be a surprise i can't take it you know so if you have that moment while you're actually shaking somebody's hand and you're like oh my god so that that's nice to be able to recognize those moments yeah they're, they're great all right so we are coming up on an hour now why don't we move on to the next part of the episode which is our Clamp mendations. <laughs> clamp mendations. That means you know, recommend sh- but combined with the word clamp. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. We try That's to what, make everything clamp. Well, what yeah, kind of clamp though? Is it gonna be a squeeze clamp? Because I don't think I have anything to say about a squeeze clamp. Well, you can recommend the best type of clamp. That's what you can do. <laughs> if you can recommend anything, it doesn't have to be Parallel or anything. Clamp. Yeah. Oh really? Yeah. Let's see. Um I I have mine if if you guys don't mind if I kick it off. Go for oh, it. Yep. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Oh. so i've been uh it's actually good jimmy that you pushed it off towards uh to today because i've had nothing for this week i've just been like heads down working on a bunch of stuff and hadn't watched anything but last night um eden and i watched eternal sunshine of the spotless mind oh yeah that's a great movie yeah i um it's a charlie kaufman movie so he did being john malkovich adaptation and uh synecdoche i think that's how you pronounce it synecdoche new york um i've been meaning to watch it for a while and it's uh it's really really cool it's it's surreal it's uh it's hard to explain because he has a very unique style but it's a beautiful movie and i don't know if you guys have seen it but i really really enjoyed it yeah it's really good when i was in university i had the poster hanging on my wall oh cool yeah, I love his cinematography, or not his, but the cinematography in his movies. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just like so creative, um, and like the, it's kind of like um, who did what are those like uh, Shaun of the Dead? Uh, oh yeah, yeah, those, that, that guy was good. Edgar it just Wright. has a similar level of creativity of that, yeah. where it's just like, oh, I didn't, I had never thought this could be a movie. Yeah, it was really creative concept. So. Hmm. Well, I I typically uh, I don't have the time or the attention span to watch a movie from beginning to end. <laughs> and uh, the funny thing is, is when me and Taylor got together, we we've been together now for ten years. This is our anniversary mm-hmm. summer. We uh, dated a little bit in the beginning. We went to a couple of movies, and then we were both like, "Yeah, want to go to a movie?" She's like, "Nah, I'm like yeah, let's just go for a long walk." And then 
it's been years. Like we can't even like rent a movie on Netflix and see it through to the end because like we'll stop both looking at our phones while the, while the iPad is playing, and we just oh you look check out this cool movie. oh this old Tony has a new video out and then we just like turn off whatever's on. Like we didn't make it through Lion King. We like watched three episodes and we were done. We're like, okay, this is cool. Oh, we go. We just look it up in the news. Oh, he's in jail. Okay, cool. We don't need to watch the rest. Oh, of Tiger King. I was like, if there's a Lion King show. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, Tiger King, Lion King. Yeah. No, yeah, Lion King like, was a Disney movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I that too. I couldn't look through that either. What? I watched the first episode of Tiger King and I was like, I'm not wasting my time on the rest of this. Like, I still, <laughs> this is terrible. I watched the whole thing and I still don't know the point of it. Yeah. <laughs> it's so, but I did watch. So the reason I'm setting that up is I did watch from beginning to end because I like the concept and I always have a soft spot for Pete Davis and the comedian from Staten Island, from Staten Island Live and his new movie. Oh, King uh, of Staten Island? King of Staten Island, yeah. So I watched that the other night. I downloaded it on uh, Apple iMovie. I Apple at whatever the hell it's called <laughs> Apple Theater or whatever the hell it is, and uh, I, I it's it's funny how advertising because I, I listen to Bill Burr all the time the comedian yeah I've, I've heard him play Bill his Bill is a very prominent part of the movie he's like one of the main characters and he he said oh you can get it on Apple and I'm like oh you can get it on Apple because like I I never know where to get anything I don't pay that much attention and so I went and got it on Apple and I downloaded it and. And I started watching. I said, because I watched it for 10 minutes, then Taylor finally settled in. I'm like, okay, I'll watch the first 10 minutes again with her. She fell asleep 20 minutes in. And then I watched the whole entire thing to the very end by myself. And I was like proud of myself. So, first time I watched the movie from beginning to the end. Cool. Wow. In like eight that's, years. That's a big testimonial to that we should watch it. No, it was good. It was really good. I mean, it's a feel good movie, you know, and knowing Pete Davidson's real situation and the fact that he really did lose his dad in 9 11. And, you know, the, the fire team, the, the team of firemen kind of take him in and develop a rite of passage for him where he's a kind of a mope and then he turns into a little bit more of a responsible young man. It's good. That was my clamp commendation. All right. <laughs> go, go ahead, Adam. I want to go last. Okay. Um, well, you actually touched on this one last week, but so my recommend clamp commendation this week is fix it fingers, but more specifically his um, video he did on where to find wood for free. Uh, Ooh, especially in Australia. Especially in Australia. So and the there's two reasons why I like it. One, he's, he was really knowledgeable on, um, different types of wood that we get here in Australia because unlike America, we don't get Walmart walnut. And if we do, it's like hundred dollars a ball foot, board foot. So, and, um, and then really? the, the other point I like is that he actually rein, um, reinstated the fact that wood is extremely expensive here in Australia. And I'm, I'm not just a liar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like last episode was pretty unbelievable. We're like, Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah, Jimmy, wood, wood here is so damn expensive. Is walnut really $100 a board foot? Last time I looked it up, yeah. And it's very wow. hard to come by too. Whoa. And how about – like I can mail you some. How how expensive is uh, – is, say for instance like um, like a teak? Like here a teak is like $20 a board foot and that's a lot of money. I don't think I've ever seen it. Teak. You know teak is like usually used on boats. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't think I've ever really seen it for sale. I haven't looked for it wow. in, in that case. But say, okay, what's well, the like way I room? normally say, so a, a sheet of plywood here in Australia is probably about ninety bucks. Wow. Yeah. Well, like for for like build grade quality too. Like yeah, right. so I mean here, I mean here, like like uh, like Home Depot. You you familiar with Home Depot? Yeah, yeah. Like home, like what do you guys have? Because I was going to come to Australia in October, but it got cancelled. Well, yeah, we have Bunnings, which is like Bunnings. That's Bunnings was going to host the thing. I was going to go and do something with Bunnings. I think it was yeah. called Bunnings. Anyway, um, like a Home Depot sheet of plywood is about fifty bucks US, like the good stuff. But if you were yeah, going to go to like stuff, a, exactly like a proper panel shop, like for instance, we have Baltic birch, which I guess is wood from the Baltics. Baltic birch, which is like no voids, eleven ply. That's like ninety to one hundred and twenty dollars a sheet. Yeah, that's good stuff. Yeah, well, when, when I say ninety bucks, I'm talking about like the like three ply, but it's three quarters inch thick, like yep. real cheap crap that they just use for building. Yeah, so, well, 
I, I believe Which you now. Why okay? the Australia MDF is very popular. <laughs> <laughs> well, for uh, for my clamp mandation, or what I should recommend everyone should put in their clamps, is uh, Dude Dad. Uh, it's like this guy, he's a comedian turned into a YouTuber who also does like makes things sometimes, but uh, he's currently redoing a house and he did this skit where he pretends to be his wife. Uh, <laughs> oh, I he's, saw that. Where he goes around and he's like, when is this going to be done? Yeah. yeah, that was, I saw that on Instagram. <laughs> oh man. So I saw it on Facebook and then I looked up on YouTube. He's huge on Facebook and he only has like 150,000 subscribers on YouTube. And he yeah. he deserves way more subscribers because his stuff is hilarious. Mm-hmm. And then his wife did like a, a like the response to that video and pretended to be him. And I <laughs> literally almost rolled on the floor laughing when. Oh, he, could you could you send me that? Could you send yeah. me those? Yeah, I'll send yeah I've been those. emailing with you, right? I've been emailing yeah. with you, right? Yeah, yeah. Send me those. I would love to see them right. because oh, yeah. sorry, I just saw the Instagram like the shortened version of the video. Oh yeah, it was I. It was hilarious. It was exactly like some of the words. I was like, "That's exactly what my wife says." Like, oh, it was funny. <laughs> but uh, so that's what. I, otherwise, and if you don't want to watch those, watch Pat Lap because he's also funny. And of he course, put out, he put yeah, out his a video very this funny video, <laughs> and I love Pat. And I, I'm sorry that you're my secondary recommendation, Pat. But you're never going to listen. What is what is Pat what is Pat making with that tube? Like what is that tube he's working on so hard? Oh, that that tube's an an urn, but uh, he is that put what out, that is? Yeah, he put out an Old Spice commercial. I saw that. I saw his Instagram. I didn't watch the video yet, <laughs> oh, but yeah. uh, that's I knew. You know, it's funny that urn he's been working on. I didn't realize it was an urn, but I knew it was something precious because how much time he's given it and how much attention. Who is who is it for? Do we know? I don't. I don't know. Is it a higher job? I don't know. Yeah. I, he is as much as I'm his friend. He is not. He lives like two plus hours away from me, so I don't. I don't know. Right on. All right. So, sorry, I'm yawning. I had a long day, but I'm not yawning because you guys aren't fun. I'm just having a great time. It's midday here, and I'm yawning. So, <laughs> yeah. so, so uh, now I have a baby. So last week we put off uh, the new reviews we got until this week. So we have a. We have, we have a deal in this podcast. If you I give think, us a review, we will read it. What's up? I think Grant just wanted to hear your Australian accent again. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, and if the and if the reviews come from Australia, I've agreed to do them in an Australian accent. So the first one's real short. I don't think they're from Australia, but uh, sorry, Second it's like on my phone. It's really small. <laughs> uh, keep up the great work by Waven Towel says. Thanks for a great podcast. I can't wait for more awesome episodes to come. And the one we've all been waiting for from Vegan Demo. Another Aussie. Excellent. I know it only makes up one third of this podcast, but it's nice to hear another Aussie voice in the makersphere. In true to form, mine, I've forgotten all the names in the first five minutes since episode five just ended and opening up this review. I mm-hmm. binged the first three shows, I guess that's Australian slang for episodes, uh, last week, heard episode four yesterday, and, down- and five downloaded this morning. Not sure how I found this. Probably a random search of maker. Anyway... This podcast has some of the same traits as many of the ones I enjoy listening to. What are you working on? We have a topic. Random tangents that lead away from the topic. Love it. Keep it up. Now I have to find their Instagrams and YouTube channels. Damo. The, Austri- the Aussie should be able to say this right. Did I say that right? Damo. Damo. Oh. Demo. What, does that, what does that mean? <laughs> It's like it's um it's like a slang thing here. Like you know how we're talking about bogans, was it last week or the week before? Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. yeah, so it's like um you just add O to, like say Sha- if your name's Shane, it's like Shano. Oh okay. so his name would be Damon. Oh so, okay. Damo yeah, so shorten it to Damo. Shout out to Damo. Damo. <laughs> the also should be able to say this right. AKA Ujaga PV. Wow, he has like three usernames. <laughs> Uh, oh, I right, know yeah, who he is to- now. Yeah, I know oh, who okay. he is. Yeah, I, I just realized that too. Yeah, he subscribed to me. Yeah. All right. Thanks for bearing with me there. I feel like my accent was better than last time. I yeah. think it was funnier last time. Yeah. yeah what was- do you What do you think, Jimmy? Was rate his Aussie accent on a scale? Of I thought it was actually really good. I, yeah. I couldn't say if his lips weren't moving, I would have thought it was you. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Uh, uh, no, 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 well, honestly, yeah, it was good. It was good. Thanks. Right. Nice. <laughs> well, thanks so much, Jimmy, Be, for coming Being on. nice is free. 
<laughs> That's right. That's what I learned from Luke. <laughs> there you go. Jesus. <laughs> when you guys make me laugh, I'll, I'll squeeze my taser. Oh. Let me set my headphones down. Jeez. Can you hear that? I think I'm having an electrical problem. Hold I got a loose. I got a loose microphone wire. I'm losing you. That's how better. <laughs> you should have added an earth to that lamp. <laughs> <laughs> if you, you know, if you do show electrical in a video, you should include that. And in- <laughs> <laughs> like, plug it in from under the desk. Oh. oh. All right. Well, yep. with that, thanks, Jimmy, so much for coming on. This is <laughs> smelling, smelling it burning. <laughs> smelling I got my burning, own. Man. I got my own pocket taser. Happens to be on my desk. That's what that is. That that isn't my lamp with no earth. Don't get me nervous. <laughs> well, guys, thanks yeah, for having me. It. Is there anything else? Like, what else do we do? This is it. Uh, um, where can you find everyone? I'm sure everyone knows where to find Jimmy. But if you don't, YouTube. Just Google the rest on YouTube. I'm the one with the most subscribers. Don't follow my brother or my nephew. <laughs> <laughs> you can find me at my new website makeamaki.com which has a link to all my socials and you can find me at the grant alexander on all the social media that matters which means twitter isn't included grant, uh, can i say something grant alexander is a very famous sounding name you better live up to it you better get that quick oh thank you <laughs> I, I, I hope to live up to it. Now I'm under a lot of pressure. Oh, no. you got to get those subscribers up, bro. Come yeah. on, it's a good name. Well, you know Sounds what? Like you, could, you, could, you could follow me on Instagram. and then I will right now. One more. Let's do it. Uh, and the you can find Grant me. Alexander. Sorry. sorry the Grant Alexander, right? Yeah, the, the Grant Alexander. Not that other Grant Alexander who stole my identity. Yeah, he's our, he's our mortal enemy. You'll find us all when I tag you in a story in an hour, Jimmy. Right. Because <laughs> J- Jimmy doesn't have a million unread messages on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> and I, you I do. Me, you can find me at Yelrom Blog everywhere and at yellromblog.com. And you can find us collectively at Clampcast. Right? On Instagram. That's me. On Instagram. Clampcast. Hey. How do you spell that? It's like the word clamp <laughs> and then the word cast <laughs> one word oh man you guys do use it look at it look at all those <laughs> look at all those Irwin squeeze clamps that should be thrown away hey i made that logo in paint thank you very much by the way <laughs> you his logo is in paint by the way it didn't say follow back it just said follow you know what that means oh now you guys you gotta follow me back we we follow anyone who's a guest on our podcast. Yeah, that's it. Now you got to follow so you me back. Follow. Who else should I follow? Give, give me everybody else's name. Uh, I'm Maker Mackey. M A K E R M A C K E Y. M O M A C K E Y. Maker Mackey, I got you. Is this? Uh, oh, I got to follow back. So that must be you. Thank you, sir. <laughs> and then who else? Uh, I'm at Yelrom blog. So Y E L R O M. Hold on. B L O G. Y E L O R N. R O M. R O. Hold on. Say it one more it's, time. Slow. It's his name really... backwards. It's my name backwards. Cause my first name isn't unique enough. Hold on. Uh, say it again. Y E L. Yeah. R O M. B L O G. If this isn't clue enough that I need to rebrand, then I don't know what is. <laughs> what you your name is Morley and you put it backwards? I know. I mean, I know your name is Morley because but I see it here on the thing, of course. But oh. the thing I'm asking is, why did you spell it backwards? That's a great question. Come, come to me. <laughs> Tell me. Let's let's work this out. I, let's you know, do a whole nother podcast on why you changed your name to backwards. Yeah, Jimmy. You know, I think at the time when I was when I was oh, you got it, I was like that's, went, uh, that's clamp cast, not me. I, I already did believe. <laughs> of course, but Morley, go ahead. I'm sorry, I'm breaking, I'm breaking balls. But go ahead. No, no worries. When I, I mean, at the time when I was setting up, it was kind of like a blog, and I think I, I didn't want it to be like my name because I, I wanted to be like more ambiguous for whatever reason. And right. then I, I, I transitioned it to the more like, um, designing, making side of things, and right. it's just well, you're still young. 
You're still young. I yeah. give you that. You're still you're only 23. I'm 30 years old. He is very young. <laughs> and one thing I could tell, uh, what were you going to say, Grant? Uh, the other problem is every single make something has been taken. Right. Right. If well, you want it to be like Morley make, it's probably already taken. No, I mean or, the the yeah. rebranding is just going to be like in line with my name. Just my, I, I suggest everybody just use your name because if. This is just this is just my my two cents. I mean, there are some very successful channels where, where like, of course, Bob make everything. I like to make stuff, and and Dave make uh, you know whatever, uh, make something, <laughs> make everything, make it, making it. You know, but the point of making is, I think it's really important that you brand your name, brand your name, because I it's just my opinion. I think you can get more advertising money in the long run if it's your personality that advertisers start to really yeah. like. And that is much more in line with my content. It is like yeah. my personality. It's just, it hasn't been, I, I talked about this on the other podcast. Like I need, I don't focus a lot on branding. I kind of put it on the back burner and like, just be like, oh, it'll, the content will speak for itself. And that's not really my focus right now, but I, I do need to put some focus on it. Cause I mean, I, I have two companies. I have Duresta Unlimited, which I've had for many years. That's my, corporation that's my business corporation the rest are unlimited i never write it anywhere I, you never see it anywhere and i also have i make new york in, incorporated and i never ever tell anybody that like if you go to i make new york.com that's my commerce website my newest one but that's a business i've had for about three years and you know of course i make has been my license plate for over 17 years and that's turned into like a little icon, you know, it's like a little sub brand of what I'm doing. I I make, you. And uh, so anyway, the point of making this is I always kind of tout those little funny things as like secondary. Well, I tout, I make mostly as like a little secondary thing, but mostly I just brand my name. And that's, yeah. that's, that's why I changed my name because I used to be something else and I just wanted to make it my name. Although I, I make a Mackie, not Adam Mackie, but. Uh-huh. I, li- I like your brand, Adam. Yeah, I I I, I, like, I like my brand. It's nice because it, it, it's an alliteration, and you know, and that actually is your name. So, an, an alliteration yeah. is 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 nice to have if you can get out of it. My alliteration was diarrhea duresta, but I didn't think it would be a good. <laughs> <laughs> didn't work for the maker business. No, no That's what the kids called me at school when I was a little kid. They would call me diarrhea duresta, and it's only Take because it. It would only be because it would like it was alliteration that they thought it was it would roll off their tongue, and then it would also humiliate me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you I think that's what I, mine was like. <laughs> I, I just had everyone sing the Mickey Mouse song to me. M A C K E Y M O U S E. I think you do M A K E R M A C. New intro. <laughs> yes. And you could take it right from this, the recording, and it's Jimmy Duresta doing the intro to your video. <laughs> well, if, if I switch my name around. If we did it for Morley, it could be Y E L M. Wait, Y E L R M O. Y E L O. I don't know how to spell Morley back. I don't even know how to spell Morley Fortwoods. Yeah, it's, it's misspelled like 70% of the time. It's like my name is Mr. Mesixlaplex, but it's my name at Mr. Mesixlaplex backwards.com. That, that's my email. <laughs> All right. Oh, well, man. I'll change my name before next time. I'm sorry. Well, I'm just <laughs> I know, I know. Well, if Jimmy Duresta tells you to change your name, you should probably change your name. Person. <laughs> yeah. You should change it from Morley to Fred. Yeah. Fred McIntyre. I think my parents would disown me. F R E D D E R F. Did I just do that backwards, right? Fredders. <laughs> Fred Riff. Uh All right. Well, with that, thank you everyone so much uh, for listening. Let me know when this is be published. I'll, I'll, you know, Instagram it and tweet it and let everybody know. Uh, we, had laughs. we had a lot of laughs. Two days. Wait, Monday morning. Tomorrow night. Yeah. Yeah, Monday, Monday morning for you guys. Yeah. yeah. I'll text you. I'll text you and say it's live. Yeah, please do. And, you know, send me the link. Don't hesitate to text yeah. me if you ever want to bullshit about anything. If right. you want to discuss I'll, more leads, hey, I'll be seeing you in You guys want to talk about me behind my back. <laughs> where, where, where are we going to hang out? In, October? Uh, the Maker maker Camp. Oh, you're coming. Awesome. Yeah. That's going to be my, a good one this year, hopefully. Yeah. My biggest regret, huh? my biggest regret of, of last year is not going to the first one. 
Oh, you know, we had a really, really nice time. I think this one's going to be good, too. I just really hope that, you know, COVID doesn't screw things up. Yeah. And uh, but, I did contact them, and they said if the border's still closed by that time, that they'll refund my money. So. Oh, yeah, yeah. They're, they're good people. They're sweet yeah. people. They should let yeah. everyone know that because there's probably more people who would buy tickets knowing they'll do the right thing. Well, I'll tell Austin that to post that on the Instagram. We, he and I need to do an update soon because a lot of people are asking me if it got canceled. And I said, no, it didn't. Yeah. Sorry, everyone that listens to our podcast now knows. Yeah. <laughs> so that's the hundreds, and hundreds dozens of, of us. Dozens of people. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, awesome. right guys. Hopefully Thank see you, you so if you much. ever come to Australia, Jimmy. Uh, yeah. You know, I, again, I'm supposed to be coming there with the buntings. Is that what it's called? Bunnings? Buntings. Yeah, I, I, they, they it was, we were going to come in October. I was going to come with April, but that got canceled. And now, since you guys did such a good job with COVID, they're uh, they're talking about kicking it right back up again. So it won't be October; it'll be later because now everything got shoved around. But yeah, that'll we'll be this year. Yeah, yeah. I think it's. I think he's just doing like a you know real preliminary for the, for the next event. So yeah. But thank you guys. It was a lot of fun hanging out with you guys. It was a lot of laughs, and uh, you know it was all in good fun. So thank you very much. Yeah, for sure. No, thank you for coming. This has been great. All right. Yes. And how do I hang up now? How do I say goodbye? It's always <laughs> the hardest part. Bye. You, just, you say, I love you. Isn't that how you end the podcast? I say, I love you. I love you. Us Canadians got to stick together. <laughs> Except I don't know Pat. I, we have, we have no, we've had no connection. You're not uh, Canadian. You're right. I'm a transplant. I'm just I'm, <laughs> a, I'm in no man's land. <laughs> yeah. Sweet. Oh, we were. Do we record? We got to get that sound effect. Oh, nice. We were. Uh, yeah. We were. I press oh. record straight away. <laughs> Perfect. All right. We're all ready to go. Yeah, so um, I guess just intro wise, I was gonna be, I was gonna say hello, welcome to Clamp the Creed and Living Making Podcast. Joining me is Grant. Grant will say hello. Adam, Adam will say hi, and special guest Jimmy, and then Jimmy will say hi. Does that, does that sound reasonable? Yeah, that's good. Cool. Yep. So uh, it's already recording, right? We don't, we don't need to worry about that cast. You guys. Yeah, it's here. all recording. No, we're trying yeah, to kind of just slide into it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> let's go. What do you and need for just, me? Just tell me. Nothing. Uh, you can swear if you want, uh, but you know, don't feel compelled. Uh, <laughs> this isn't the make your own way podcast uh, where I think every other word you said was a swear word. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> the uh, the the podcast with Andrew and and, and Eric, I, sometimes I get a little crazy. Yeah, that's the only place though. They are in my bedroom. Other than that, <laughs> we try to keep it clean. Yeah, it's just yeah, it's pretty casual. We we just uh, we chat. We have the topic, and mentors. riff on that. Yeah, mentors. Um, okay, sweet. You guys ready? Yep. All right. In three, two, one.